This is Chibi Sita. I literally got it about two weeks ago. Uh, I did some babysitting work for a couple of friends of mine. Who told me to tell me stand up. And so I babysitted their dog because they had a family emergency. And when I gave the dog back, they handed me this. And I was honestly quite surprised. I was just born crying. Now, why would something like this almost make me cry just because it's a toy? Because of what it represents. These people are very good friends of mine, and apparently they know me so damn well. <laughs> Give me this. <laughs> Where, all right. uh, what is this exactly? Well, they purchased it from thinkgeek.com, which is an online store that was established in 1999 for all your geek needs and pretty much any kind of subculture, series, whatever. I am a major, major Aliens fan. So, and this is basically a cute version of the Xenomorph, which is the primary antagonist of the Alien series. Now, it was originally written by David O'Bannon and Russell Schulze, who were the screenwriters of Alien. They wanted a very specific monster. They wanted something that nobody else had ever seen, that touched on very disturbing themes for the 1979 Alien movie that was directed by Ridley Scott. Uh, David O'Bannon would used to work with a guy named H.R. Geiger on a different production down in Brazil. And he liked Geiger's work, and he showed some of his work to Ridley Scott, who was the director, and they were flipping through the Necronomicon, which was actually Geiger's huge art list set, and they found exactly what they wanted in the Necronom 4, which I have a picture of it, but it's not exactly PG. <laughs> And, but they eventually adapted it to look like this. Well, the more scary version, but. And yeah, what is the Xenomorph, though? <laughs> Aside from being the primary antagonist for the Aliens movies, it is a parasitic life form that has an alien morphology, thus the name Xenomorph. It changes its form throughout its entire life cycle in very, very disturbing ways. <laughs> but and we're not going to go into those very, very disturbing ways. <laughs> but, why is, this move, why is this so important to me, despite it being this? <laughs> the um, Alien series was like the Hellraiser series from my previous speech, was a series that I watched when I was really little and just was like, oh my god, this is exciting. <laughs> so, and it's one of the most influential series in my life. I've read all the books, all the comics, watched all the movies religiously. <laughs> and Sigourney Weaver is probably my favorite action heroine, and this was her very first movie. It's in my opinion that anything with Sigourney Weaver is automatically awesome. So. And most important thing of why this was such a significant gift to me is because, look at it, who expects to get this kind of weird little <laughs> cute monster thing? To me, this is very personal. This means that somebody cared enough to not only listen to what I, my hours-long rants <laughs> about random alien BS that they probably didn't know about, but it's proof that someone loves me, trusts me, and gives me something unconditionally without me even asking for it. So, I love my friends this. <laughs> and one of the things that made me really excited is, like I said, proof that somebody listened to my rants. I was utterly furious when Prometheus came out and completely destroyed the canon. <laughs> my girlfriend, who was my, my best friend, female, who's, she's one of the ones that gave it to me. Uh, when we were in nuke school, we played Halo Reach together. We were roommates, and that's where we met. And she's as much of a Halo fan as I'm an alien fan. And when we finished playing Halo Reach, she literally threw the controller across the room. <laughs> because in her opinion, it completely ruined the canon. So I got to sit through at least five hours of her ranting about that. When Prometheus came out, and I called her up, <laughs> went on a five hour rant of how this Ridley Scott completely destroyed the alien canon yet again. She sat there, listened to me the entire time, and years later, after I babysit her, her baby, her lovely little Zoe, who's about this big and likes to destroy my couch, she, they, her and her husband hand me this. And this was basically just proof that, yes, I listen to you. Yes, I care what your opinion is. Yes, everything you say matters to me, and I love you just as much as you love me, and I trust you just as much as I care about you. So, me, almost made me cry, and just 
reinforce that idea that it's not exactly what the gift is, it's the thought that counts.